The design of this model is based primarily on a written description by Augustus de Morgan from 1840. This model was never intended to be an exact representation, historically accurate in all its details. Instead, it's intended to be the simplest representation that satisfies de Morgan's description. It's intended as a proof of concept model to provoke discussion about what might have been. Although Fowler's machine was capable of both multiplication and division, for the purposes of the following descriptions, it's much easier just to think about the multiplication problems. All of the numbers in Fowler's machine are expressed in balanced ternary, so all of the mechanisms have three states. The first section of the machine is the multiplicand, which consists of a series of sliding rods. These rods can be placed in any of three positions. And there are indicators here for plus, zero, and minus. The slots on each multiplicand rod engage the multiplier mechanism, as we'll see shortly. The multiplicand is not really part of the mechanism. It's really a mnemonic device that helps the user know which way to rotate the ladder frame of the multiplier. The multiplier is a large frame which can slide laterally relative to the rest of the machine, allowing it to act on one digit at a time. At one end of the multiplier is the ladder frame, which rotates around an axis through its center. At the bottom, you can see the tooth that engages the multiplicand, and there are three rungs on the ladder frame. The, multipl the multiplier rods can snap onto any of those rungs, and depending on which rung it snaps to, the tooth at the far end of the multiplier rod moves back and forth, or if it snaps to the middle rung, not at all. The product assembly is a raised platform on which there are several rods that slide back and forth. Each rod has a series of gear teeth along the top to engage the carry mechanism, and these spaces on the bottom, which engage the teeth on the multiplier mechanism that we've just seen. The platform that the product rods slide along allows for considerable over-travel of the product rods. This is necessary because the carry mechanism is not integral, and its use requires the calculation to be interrupted temporarily. Allowing over-travel is a way of delaying the need to employ the carry mechanism in the hopes that some of the negative digits in the ternary system will average the digit back towards an allowable value. The carry mechanism is a separate assembly that can hinge down and engage with the, the gear racks on the top of each product rod. De Morgan's description wasn't very clear on the exact nature of the carry mechanism, so this is the most speculative part of our recreation. De Morgan's description does state that it only acts on two adjacent product rods and needs to be manually positioned for any digits requiring a carry. I'll now walk through the steps of a simple multiplication problem. 2 times 6 equals 12. You can see the signed ternary values beneath each decimal value. The first step is to set the value of the multiplicand. It's a plus in the three digit and a minus in the ones digit. Next, we set the value of the multiplier by snapping the multiplier rods onto the ladder frame. A plus for the nines column, a minus for the threes column, and a zero for the ones column. Next, we ensure that the carry mechanism is disengaged and that all the product rods are centered on the product platform, setting them all to zero. Now that the machine is all set up, we slide the multiplier assembly laterally to engage the first multiplicand rod. The action of the rotating frame is such to bring the multiplicand rod back to the zero position. Okay. 
as the ladder frame is rotated, you can see that the teeth on the multiplier rod can push and pull the product rods into the appropriate position. Once the first multiplicam rod is restored to zero, the multiplier frame is slid to, an, slid to an intermediate position. The ladder frame is restored to the vertical position and it's ready to engage the next multiplicam rod. That multiplicam rod is also restored to the zero position. And in this case, since there are only two digits to the multiplicam, the calculation is now complete. The answer can be read off of the product rods. You can see here there's an overdraft in the nines digit. This is a, a double negative here. So the carry mechanism needs to be aligned and engaged with the product rods. And then this value is restored to an allowable value. So now we can read the answer as plus plus zero, which is equal to a decimal value of 12.